I was working for a paper that was called the Daily News when they sent me up the bush to do some interviews so readers in the city might better understand what drought does to the country and the people on the land. Dust and corrugations left, no doubt I was out back. So I looked around for someone who lived down this awful track. Then I saw a fellow standing, sort of leaning on a tree. And I'd have to say he looked for all the world like Bush to me. I got out and walked up to him, and I bid him fair good day. And explained to him the reason I was driving out this way. He pushed a wide brimmed hat back and slowly scratched his head. What I really have to tell you, take a look around, he said. Did you see the bones of cattle bleaching in the sun? Did you see the dried out creek beds where the water used to run? If you watch the wedge tail circle in a blue and cloudless sky, it will show you where our livestock are laying down to die. Gaze across the barren landscape where the willy willies play. No fields of grain are waving neath the blazing sun today. The tractors are all silent and the plows are in the shed. You should go and talk to people who keep this nation fed. There you'll find a lot of heartache. You can write up if you must. You can say you've seen their hopes and dreams go blowing in the dust. But if you look into the faces of the people that you meet, you will see a certain something. That refuses to be beat. And when back in the city, air conditions soft and cool, watching ladies in bikinis as they frolic around the pool, tapping keys there on your laptop, a cold glass near your hand. Will your readers or your leaders give a damn or understand that in the face of this disaster, when it seems all hope is gone, there are men and women out here with a will to carry on? No charity is asked for, just a helping hand, old mate, or one day on your table. You might find an empty plate. Yes, one day on your table, you might find an empty plate.